do you see all the tension in the world? Israel, Palestine, Iran, Yemen, the United States, the UK, Russia, Ukraine, I'm sure Lebanon, if not already soon to be. There's all sorts of problems. Uh, I believe World War III has already begun. But the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that war begins in the spiritual realm. And when it becomes so intense in the spiritual realm, it spills over into the natural realm. That's why we're seeing this, because it's in the heavens. Because God is shaking things up. Judgment is on this world, on wickedness. And I, if, if whether it's at the we're at the very end or not, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's a very serious time to live in. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 10 that he came to bring a sword. Let me read Matthew 10, 34 to 39. And this doesn't mean that God is the one who kills. When Jesus says he brings a sword, it's because he's truth. He's righteousness. And a lost world doesn't want it. A lost world rejects him, and so when he's bringing truth, he's the one that owns everything. He's the only one with life in him, and he shows up and he brings truth, and the world rejects him. So, like, he's not—he's not coming. He comes. To, he came to pick a fight, without a doubt. I remember telling uh, some people that, and they disagreed that he came to pick a fight. Oh, yes, he did. He—he he was healing people on the Sabbath on purpose because he knew that the hypocrites would not like it and of course that was the right day to heal anyway it's a day of rest right but in matthew 10 34 39 he says he brings a sword so it, when he was healing on a sabbath he was picking a fight because he came to make a distinction between light and dark let's read this starting in 34 think not that i am come to send peace on earth I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth, findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. That's, it's very, very strong language there in the Word of God. And a lot of people think that they're, they've taken up their cross and they follow him, but they don't. Look at all the people in this world, in this nation. I was about to say just in this nation, but I'm, it goes on throughout the whole world, that identify as Christian but have never shared their faith with anybody. We're called to the reconciliation of the faith. We're supposed to be sharing with people what Jesus did for them. And there are many people, like I said, who identify as Christian who have never shared their faith once. They think that just doing the right thing in the eyes of God, believing in Jesus, doing the right things in the eyes of God is good enough. And it may be God is very merciful, but we, see, we come across very strong scripture like this. If you don't, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. So does that mean, so if somebody's not worthy of Jesus, does that mean that they're going to just squeeze into heaven or they're not going to heaven? I, I think it's like it's treading on thin ice. It's so reckless to bet your eternity that you're going to be right about a certain interpretation of scripture. Why not? Take the side of a holy fear of God. It's just evil how people, they, they don't, when you reject Jesus Christ, you have no clue. You don't even realize you're doing wrong. You just you just defend your your side and everybody else is evil. Look look what happened with Joshua at Jericho when the uh when the the, the angel of the Lord showed up, the warrior with a drawn sword or sword by his side, and Joshua was like intimidated, are you for them or for us? And he, and he said, no, neither. I believe that was Jesus before he manifested a Christophany, uh, captain of the, of the hosts, the Lord's hosts. And he said, neither. But but I have now come to do the Lord's will, in other words. And uh, he, you know, because Jesus is not, he's not for death. He's not, God doesn't want people dying. It's just, 
judgment was on Jericho and God was meeting out his judgment through people like he does. He puts a sword in the hand of people and they meet out the judgment on wickedness and he can do it directly through an angel. And, and in fact, with Jericho, the angel of the Lord was there, but there's no indication that the angel of the Lord was striking people down. He was just there to make sure that everything went as it was supposed to go without him doing the killing. He was on, he wasn't for either side. It's an interesting thought, you know, but e even though Jesus came to bring a sword, but it's a sword, it's, it's righteousness. He's not bringing a sword to kill people. It automatically puts people at variance with him that are wicked, that refuse to humble themselves. And so their people are getting what they want. It's not God wanting them dead. God's will is for people to live. And so, but when time is up, time is up. They, they, people kill themselves. You, you reap what you sow in life. And so it's here. It's upon us. And I'm waiting for April 23rd. Uh, I had a dream last year where I was sleeping. Before I went to sleep that night, I was listening to Nancy Cohen talking about how Isaiah 60 verses 1, 2, and 3 was about to be fulfilled. And, uh, and then I went to sleep. And... In the morning, let me go to Isaiah 60, verses 1, 2, and 3. And sometime in the morning, I went, to, I went to sleep with audio Bible on long before Isaiah 60. I, I usually the beginning of Psalms. And in the morning, an angel stepped on my hand to wake me up. And I knew an angel stepped on my hand because the moment it happened, I... God was revealing it to me in my mind's eye. And I thought it was kind of humorous because uh, my hand was to my side and, and the angel just tapped my hand with his foot and woke me up right at the moment where I was hearing audio Bible saying chapter 60. So about to start reading Isaiah 60 verses, verse 1, which goes like this. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth in gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. But yet we have all this turmoil in the world, so God is making a distinction between those who serve him and those who serve him not. And that dream, that was that those verses were given to me on purpose, because Hours earlier, like I said, Nancy Cohen was saying it was going to be fulfilled. And I do believe in multiple fulfillment of scripture. And so it's, and I'm going to be 60 on April 23rd, 2024. I'm going to be 60 years old. And so I believe on April 23rd, this is going to be fulfilled. I, I'm, I don't, I've never claimed to be a prophet, but I just put, I piece together things little by little. And it just, it's interesting how, Israel also, they're doing something on April April 23rd or April 24th is a big day with Israel uh, with with their sacrificial system, which is which they want to get going again and build a temple and all that and the, the red heifer and all. So th something's coming. So be ready. You need to be vigilant and be quick to repent. Nobody's perfect. I've messed up so many times. My mouth gets me in trouble a lot. But I'm just, I'm quick to repent. Just like David, David made some awful mistakes, but God said, this is a man after my own heart because, because David was a worshiper of God. He was in the presence of God more than he was committing those atrocious sins, even though he did commit atrocious sins. But he was, he was quick to repent. And when he was confronted, he acknowledged it. He didn't try and hide it or justify himself. And so, so it's not, it's not, being perfect, although that is our goal, <laughs> we, we're trying to, we want to get to the point where we look and sound just like Jesus Christ. And if we are staying in his presence, we go from glory to glory and things should be getting better and better every year. 2024 should be the best year yet if you are in Jesus Christ. And then if we're all still here next year, 2025 should be even better for those who are in Jesus Christ. But this is going to be a terrible year for the disobedient. And so we want to just do.
do everything we need to do right. So how do we avoid trouble? Well, it says in Proverbs 16, 7, when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's how you get around all this. Be pleasing to the Lord. Be obedient. Stay in the Lord's presence. Be quick to repent. And then he will make your enemies be at peace with you. And now those are spiritual enemies, but if the, if your spiritual enemies are at peace with you, then that's going to translate into people in the natural being at peace with you. So yes, the war begins in the spiritual, and when it's intense, it spills over into the natural realm. And so we've got it happening in the natural realm because it's intense in the spiritual realm. And so there are amazing days to be living in. So God bless you. Check out the description section of this video, especially a link to the, our website, carboboxchurch.com. I'm trying to use that website as much as possible because of censorship on YouTube. Stay with Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him, come to Jesus Christ. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Acknowledge your needs. Say yes to him. Read his Bible. Pray and walk with him in, in the best you know how, according to uh, his word and and as you're growing you'll become more and more obedient as you as you get the word in you more and more because you'll learn more and more what pleases him and what doesn't please him